Every day is filled with choices. You're here because you're choosing to start with a win. Get ready to be inspired, learn something new, and connect with the Win Nation. And coming to you from Remax World Headquarters in Denver, Colorado, it's Adam Kanto, CEO of Remax with Start With a Win. How you doing, Producer Mark? I'm doing so good. I love it. I love it. You got your baseball cap on today. Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's the kind of baseball cap kind of day. <laughs> it, well, they're doing the, uh, what is it, the All-Star Game is this yeah. week here in Denver. Yeah, here in, here in Denver, exactly. Yeah, yeah so, so very cool. Well, hey, we have a really, really cool guest here. So, you know, I'm, I spent a little time in law enforcement and really interested in this kind of stuff, really uh, how interesting people do interesting and great things in this world. So today we have Tracy Walder, a former CIA officer and FBI special agent on the show. This is really cool. Tracy, uh, welcome to Start With a Win. How are you doing today? Thank you so much for having me, Adam. I really appreciate it, and I'm excited to, I guess, be here. <laughs> well, we're excited to have you. I mean, I mean, this is like a big history. Tell us about Tracy. I mean, how do you describe yourself? What do you tell people when they go, hey, tell me about yourself? That's a hard question to answer. I'm pretty, I can be pretty shy, I guess, um, and uh, not very, uh, I don't talk about myself a whole lot. So I guess I would say I'm an introverted extrovert is is what I, I would tell people. <laughs> I, I think another uh, adjective probably to describe me is, is tenacious. I'm very tenacious. Um, I guess if someone says you can't, I take that as you can. <laughs> uh, so I think I that's how, how folks would, would probably describe me. Maybe that's annoying. <laughs> I didn't really come from a, a CIA family, if you will. But um, I, you know, I've my great grandparents fought in the Franco-Prussian War. Both of my grandpas fought in World War II. Uh, my dad and my uncle are Vietnam veterans. My dad has sailed the Transpac four times. So I come from a, uh, I guess, adventurous family. I mean, maybe that's sort of the right uh, word for it. And so I think I've always had this sense of adventure, but I didn't have a word for it or like a place for it necessarily. We traveled a lot and I decided um, to go to USC. My dad's a professor there. Um, and I decided to join a, a sorority and really actually the sorority was a turning point for me and my confidence um, because I was bullied so much. Um, a lot of those women uh, encouraged me to meet with my professors if I had questions, to not be shy necessarily about doing that. And I had a intro to economics professor. I didn't do super great in that class. It was really tough. <laughs> and, you know, he asked me what I wanted to be uh, when I grew up. And I said, oh, I, I'm here as a history major. I'm going to be history teacher. I had a really influential teacher. That's what I was going to do. And he's like, well, there's so many other things you could do with that degree. And... He gave me sort of this this list, and I started checking off boxes. Interned at a law firm, interned for a senator, interned um, at a museum. Sort of checking boxes off, but nothing was really, I guess, it was great, but it wasn't, I guess, my calling. I hadn't identified those things as my calling um, until uh, 1997. And I know I'm really dating myself here, but I watched uh, an interview. It was Bin Laden's first interview, I guess, with a Western TV station. I believe it was CNN. And that's where he issued his declaration of war um, against the United States. And that, for me, was sort of this turning point. Um, and so really, things were just starting to sort of happen in the Middle East, but it wasn't, we didn't have a name necessarily for it. And so I went to a career fair um, with one of my sorority sisters on a whim, and I saw the CIA was looking for history majors and I said, hey, do you guys do this terrorism thing? Because this is before September 11th, so this would have been 99, I believe. And they said yes. And I gave them my resume and I guess sort of the rest is history. Uh, I, I want to jump over to your book real quick because sure. we're, we're starting to dig into, okay, what can we expect from you? Um, <laughs> you know, tell us about your book a little bit. What can we, ex what can readers expect from your book? So I think... 
people can expect, even though, you know, if you haven't worked at the CIA and you haven't worked at the FBI, I think you can actually expect to relate to me. Um, I don't think that I try to come off as perfect. Um, you know, I am imperfect and I have struggles. Um, I had frustrations. Um, I had, um, I'm not infallible. Uh, I do think what it does is it does provide a very interesting look into the CIA because I was there at a unique time. I was there before September 11th and a lot of books are written about people who were in the counterterrorism center after September 11th. It is not to knock those. It's just an interesting time to be there before, during, and after. Um, I think also uh, which doesn't have to do with the substance necessarily, but um, parts of the book are redacted. Um, I did have to go through the CIA's um, vetting process. So what you will see or read is an example um, is of five full rewrites of my book um, to get it just to the point that you see it. It wasn't even legible um, when I first got it back. And then I think also readers would get an, a kind of unique look into the differences between intelligence gathering uh, and law enforcement. Um, I think that it kind of provides a unique um, perspective on that. And um, I, I detail a little bit the hunt for bin Laden, but I wouldn't say that that's sort of like the focus um, necessarily of the book. We talk about the Iraq war and Operation Enduring Freedom as well. So I think that's what readers would, would probably expect. It reads very much like a narrative. So it's going to read a little different um, than some of the other books that are out there. How would you describe yourself in your personal characteristics where let's face it neither of these organizations are easy to get into <laughs> it's just you know you got to be the cream of the crop in order to get into these and they look for very very special people that they can trust and believe in and that trust and believe in themselves so i mean what characteristics do you see that you brought forth that that they found um you know uh, attractive to to try and and bring into their organization I would say it's it's interesting because I, I do get this question. I get this a lot from my, my college students, right, and, and from high school students. And people seem to want sort of this, this formula, right, this box that they can check of if I major in this and learn this and do this, then I will get this job at the CIA or the FBI. And what I've come to find out just in reflecting on my skills, my students who have gone into these careers, those kinds of things, um, it's actually really about your, your soft skills or things like um, empathy are incredibly important because if you think about it, I was recruiting people to spy on their own countries. They could die. <laughs> um, you know, and if they don't think that I have empathy for them, um, an ability to connect to them, um, they're not going to want to spy um, for their country and possibly die. Um, I think another thing is, is, is being collaborative, right? Being able to have, I'd say, a 360 view, kind of like what you said before of things, not bringing in your own preconceived notions. It's okay to have an opinion, um, but you don't want to get sort of blinded by your opinion. And I realized that that was a very critical thing um, that they were looking for. Um, also, I think sort of your your problem solving skills and, and your listening skills. Because half of it, you know, if I'm interviewing a terrorist or recruiting it, an asset, I have to listen to them. And if I'm not going to listen, um, then that also is extremely problematic. So I don't think sometimes we focus on developing particularly young folks's soft skills as much um, as I think we probably need to, because that's really critical um, in intelligence gathering. I think that those are some of the things that help me get get the job. I think what I've always had is curiosity. That's something I think I've had my whole life. Um, whether it was parented in me or not, I've, I've just always been like a curious person. I've also strangely been um, not, and this is going to sound strange, so let me give you an example. I don't just look at something as automatically bad. For example, um, when I was growing up, right, and I think I mentioned that I was Jewish, I didn't see the other side as bad. I saw that as, well, like, let's learn more about this problem. Why is this? Where did this come from? And that's probably some of that curiosity, I think, um, that kind of came into play. I've also been an incredibly fast judge reader of people. 
And I've always had really good judgment. I just, I guess that's parenting uh, for you as well. I've just kind of always had that. But I think what I honed at the agency, that I didn't come to the agency with a whole lot of, and part of that is unpacking stuff from childhood, was definitely uh, confidence um, and, you know, believing in myself uh, a bit more. Um, you know, people there, you don't get these pats on the back. That's not what I needed. Um, it was more about being able to make decisions on my own, being able to make calls on my own, those kinds of things. Um, I definitely honed my, my confidence, I think, a little bit more. Why did you get into teaching? So I, I did go to college to be a high school history teacher. My degree is in history. Um, so I think that that had always been in the back of my mind, you know, hey, I'm going to be a teacher. But, um, you know, I decided after a very unpleasant time at the FBI that um, I sort of found my passion and my passion was we need more women <laughs> in these, these, these careers um, right now. Only about 19% of agents at the Bureau are females, um, and only about 22% of people in national security jobs are females. Um, and that's not to say that males are bad. They're amazing. My dad is the most supportive person of me. Um, but I think we bring some things, particularly in the realm of soft skills, to the table that sometimes men don't, and men bring things that women don't. And I think we need to change that gender narrative um, and like, what does an FBI agent look like? What does a CIA officer look like? We kind of need to be dispelling those myths um, a little bit um, because I think that also keeps women sometimes from pursuing these careers. I mean, I was born in the 70s, so that's my decade. And um, I actually did not know until a few years ago and I started researching for a, a journal article um, that women, you know, it was 1972 was the year, which probably explains some of the gender um, disparity that's going on. But I think also sometimes that's frustrating that I see are women who don't want the help of men or don't want to work with men or it needs to be all women. And it doesn't. Like we need to learn how men bring things to the table, women bring things to the table. We need to recognize that and then make it a little bit more equal. And just like we can learn skills from men, they can learn skills from us. And so I think it's about being partners um, and that not necessarily adversarial about it. One thing that I get that frustrates me the most is you don't look like a CIA officer. You don't look like an FBI special agent. Well, what is it that I'm supposed to look like? What Hollywood has created um, for you? You know, my femininity does not necessarily mean that I'm stupid um, or that I'm dumb. And I think sometimes it gets confused for that or by that, and that is very frustrating to me. Um, I think that's uh, enraging might be the better word uh, for me. Um, and why don't you expect me to achieve these things just because I'm very girly and what, why? I don't, I don't understand. And so I think I'd like to just change that parody too on just a purely superficial level, which sounds terrible to say, but the more women that we see, women of color, um, feminine women, not feminine, it doesn't matter. You should be able to look at someone and say, yeah, she could have that job. What, I mean, what, why does it, why do I not fit whatever your stereotype is? And I think that's frustrating. Tracy, I do, I do have a question. Um, I, I ask everybody, and this has been a great conversation. Thank you so much. I, this is, uh, we've gone quite a while. This is two, a two part, uh, <laughs> Thank you interview here. Just, well, I mean, this is fun. First of all, where can we find you and your book? Where, uh, where do we find that? My book is at Barnes and Noble, Amazon, Target, most independent book stores as well. If you'd like to support those, it is available digitally on Kindle um, and Nook. So if, if that's the route that people want to go, they're welcome to um, as well. Um, I think socially, I keep somewhat of a low uh, profile because I don't put my family out there. But um, I am on Twitter um, at Tracy underscore Walder um, or TracyWalder.com. Awesome. And uh, Tracy, I ask everybody that's on the show a question. Um, you know, we all have a different way of, of beginning our winning for the day. And of course, the podcast is called Start With a Win, like my book right there. And uh, my question to you, Tracy, how do you start your day with a win? Uh, I would say for me, the way that I start my day with a win is 100% working out. That is what makes me focused. Awesome. Awesome. Well, 
Tracy, thank you so much for being on Start With a Win today. This this was a really good thank conversation. I encourage me. You bet. I encourage everybody to check out your book as well as Girl Security. Um, you know, and, and let's do something good for each other today. Uh, you know, this is a really an interesting way of looking at somebody who's done some incredible stuff. And uh, check out Tracy's book, The Unexpected Spy. Tracy Walter, thank you for being on Start With a Win. Thank you for having me. Hey, and thank you so much for listening to Start With a Win. If you'd like to ask Adam a question or tell us your Start With a Win story, give us a call, leave us a message at 888-581-4430. Don't forget to go on to iTunes and subscribe, write a review, and rate the show. And for more great content, head over to startwithwin.com. Follow Adam on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And remember, Start With a Win. All right, now hey, we're now we're gonna go into the after the after party. All right, like two minutes of <laughs> two fun. Minutes. That's right, secret content for people who stuck around and um, are potentially watching this on YouTube. Um, I have a question for you. Do you have a preferred uh, spy series, whether it's like Born Identity, <laughs> oh, Mission Impossible, yeah. or James Bond? <laughs> she probably hates those, Mark. I mean, I I will not watch police shows. <laughs> She probably um, stays as far away from those as possible would be my yeah, guess. So my husband really loves Homeland, and I hate there it. You go. Um, there is, I See? cannot think of a show. Well, you know why I don't like it is because Claire Day's character, like, why does she have to be crazy to want to work at the CIA? Why does she have to have all of these <laughs> right. things, right? But for me, I'd say my favorite movie, I guess the closest I think in reality is uh, Zero Dark Thirty. That's the closest okay. in terms of like what I used to do, uh, th those kinds of things. Those were my colleagues that were killed at Camp Chapman. Um, so that that would be the, the closest, mm. I think. Okay, yeah. All right, that's good. And then the other question I had for you is, have you ever been in a situation that you were like sweating bullets or like super nervous or were you kind of undercover and you were afraid you're going to be found out? And, and She probably can't answer this, out? Mark. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, my job to answer, ask the question. <laughs> I think for me, for me um, you know, because I think at the time um, – and I think uh, Adam was saying before, you know, you have to be in touch with your emotions. I'm actually very emotionally stunted because I have to be in, con in touch with other people's emotions, not mine. Mm. Um, when I'm recruiting them, it's not about me. It's about them. And so I think for mm -hmm. me, I wasn't ever sweating bullets because, you know, I was talking with terrorists, but they were in custody, right? You know, so when you're handcuffed to a wall, you're not that big of a threat. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I think, I think that would be, I, I wasn't as, um, scared uh, necessarily. Yeah. I mean, the FBI raids, uh, you know, as long as I had a shotgun, it was fine, right? Because <laughs> most people don't enjoy that. Um, so I can't really think. Uh, we did come under friendly fire once, but we are in a bulletproof vehicle. Um, yeah. So I'm sorry. I'm not. Great. No, that's great. Do you ever miss Mark, some of that? She, she, her vehicle got shot up. I mean, <laughs> how's that for you? Yeah, yeah. Bulletproof. This is. <laughs> that's right. It was bulletproof. So, uh, well, cool, Tracy. Thanks so much for for being on Start with Win and, and uh, hanging out with us. Thank and, you guys for having me. And, this is a lot of yeah. fun. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Tracy, totally. and thanks, thanks, YouTubers. We'll uh, catch you. That's guys right. Later. Don't forget to subscribe, like, review, hit that thumbs up icon, and until next time, we'll see you when we see you.